Hi everyone, this is Kate Hanneman from the Joint Department of Medical Imaging at the University of Toronto. This is a brief video tutorial which will describe cardiac segmentation. The objectives of this video are to describe cardiac segmentation, specifically using cardiac MRI examples. We'll describe cardiac segmentation along the long axis and circumference of the left ventricle, as well as along the wall thickness. We'll start with a description of segmentation along the long axis of the left ventricle. The American Heart Association, or AEJ, has described a 17-segment model, which is commonly used in the literature to describe left ventricular segmentation. This can be applied in multiple imaging modalities, including echocardiography, cardiac CT, and cardiac MRI. In this model, the heart is divided into thirds perpendicular to the long axis, corresponding to basal, midventricular, and apical segments. The true apex is also included in the 17-segment model. This is a representative two-chamber cardiac MRI SSFP image, which will be used to show the relative locations of representative short axis slices, starting with a basal short axis slice, followed by a midventricular short axis slice. You'll note that the papillary muscles are typically seen on a midventricular short axis slice in comparison to the basal short axis slice where you do not typically see papillary muscles. Next, an apical short axis slice. The circumference of the left ventricle is typically smaller as you move from base to apex, and that's due to the normal tapering of the left ventricle at the apex. Finally, the true apex is also included in this model. You'll note that all three of the short axis representative images I've showed you here were obtained perpendicular to the long axis of the left ventricle. Next, we'll move on to a description of circumferential segmentation. In the AHA model, basal and midventricular short axis slices are divided into six segments each. Apical short axis slices are divided into only four segments. The true apex corresponds to the 17th segment in this model. These short axis segments can correspond approximately to coronary artery territories. As shown here, with the left anterior descending coronary artery territory in blue, the right coronary artery territory in red, and the circumflex territory in yellow. Of course, the specific distribution of the coronary artery territories will depend somewhat on the patient's specific anatomy. At the basal and midventricular levels, there are six segments in the AHA model. Starting at the anterior segment and moving clockwise, these are the anterior, anterolateral, inferolateral, inferior, inferoseptal, and anteroseptal segments. The septal segments are defined based on the insertion points of the right ventricle specifically the anterior right ventricular insertion point and the inferior right ventricular insertion point. The apical segment is divided into only four segments. Starting anterior and moving clockwise, these are the anterior, lateral, inferior, and septal segments. The true apex is the 17th segment. These 17 segments can also be represented using a bullseye diagram. The outer ring in a bullseye diagram corresponds to the basal segments. The middle ring corresponds to midventricular segments, the inner ring to apical segments, and finally the bullseye to the true apex. Finally, we'll describe segmentation along the myocardial wall thickness. The myocardial wall can be approximately divided into thirds, corresponding to the subepicardium, which is located just below the epicardial surface, the midwall, and the subendocardium, located below the endocardial surface. Findings on cardiac MRI do not necessarily correspond to only one of these distributions and could even be transmural. So in summary, we have briefly reviewed cardiac segmentation along the long axis of the left ventricle, the circumference of the left ventricle on short axis slices, and along the wall thickness. Thank you very much for your attention.